So I'm just going to run the code as it is up to this point to refresh my memory where it's at. And um, let's see, we were at the sign up part of it. So if I create an account, v at v.com, uh, I'm going to simply try to create an account here. And so the sign up system was doing its thing. Thank you, ready to go. It's saying user doesn't exist, so all of that. I'm going to go log in, and it comes here. Okay, so this is where we last were. It's going to start to capture the email and the password and then do a whole login thing. The very last thing that we did was, well, I'm trying to log in with the account I just created, v at v.com with my password, uh, v, if I click go. All that we left it doing at the end was that from this screen now, it is seeing, um, okay, we're trying to log in. It doesn't actually fully log in yet, but the output here says on line 105, the function login is running. So all of these functions that we're creating, they have a purpose. We had FN, the one up here, FN sign up. Its purpose was to create an account for people to sign up for an account. FN login is the one we're working with right now. Its purpose is to allow a person to log in. We're going to have other functions with other purposes. FN save comic. Guess what that will do? Save a comic. We'll have a function uh, FN yeah, delete database. Guess what that will do? It'll delete the database. So we have these functions, which is chunks of uh, commands that do a purpose, that do a task. OK, so back to our code at approximately line 115 of the JavaScript file. My JavaScript line 115 near the end, approximately. This is what I'm seeing in my console output. Email is whatever they typed. Console output password is whatever they typed. So at the very least, we know the function is running once they press the button. The screen is not refreshing or giving an error because we did prevent default. And we have captured the data in the fields, made them all uppercase. Here's what's next. We need to start to see, OK, you're trying to sign in, but does your account exist? We need to check, do they exist, yes or no, and we need to do something about that. If you do exist, OK, further proceed with logging in. If you don't exist, well, let's let them know there's an error. That sounds like what kind of programming construct? Uh, what's that? And if then or, what's it called generically? Conditional statement. An if-else statement here is one type of conditional statement. We'll look at a few others. That's what's coming up here, so let's make a note. If else conditional is on line 117 before the end of your FN login. If else conditional statement to check if a user exists in where are we storing this basic user information again? Local storage. Local storage. So we're going to do an if else conditional statement to see if the user exists. They exist or not exist in a local storage cookie. So we're going to do the basic skeleton of an if else statement. If open close parentheses. Open close curly brace. I'm going to break the curly brace into separate lines. Else, open curly brace, close curly brace, separate lines. Make a note here that this is the end of our if else statement checking if a user exists, because we're going to lose track of that curly bracket. End. If else for if user exists. That's optional, of course, but incredibly helpful once you get hundreds of lines of code. All 
Okay, so the idea of how uh, the idea of us checking if a user exists is we had our fn sign up function in there. Ultimately, when the person types in their email and password, we stored it in local storage. So to check if that user exists, we need to check is there data in this local storage object that we assumed was created. If there's no data in that cookie, there's no user. If there is data in the uh, uh, local storage cookie, there must be a user. And we can uh, check that back up here briefly. Uh, back on line uh, 88 was where we set item. We're going to create a local storage cookie called whatever their email is, and their password is stored in there. We set item. What's the opposite of set item? Get item. So that's what we're going to do here. If local storage dot get item parentheses careful here these parentheses there are two of them here because obviously one is the pair from if and the other is the pair from the get item method object dot method we see this over and over in JavaScript object dot method let's get the user that is trying to log in and the and that's represented by temp val in email login we've confirmed this is the email you're trying to log in with therefore we can use it to go get if that user exists temp val in email login Let's go try to get this cookie named whatever their email is. After the parentheses but be, uh, for get item, but before the parentheses for if, space, uh, equals, 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 that's three equals, no. If when we try to get the cookie and there's nothing inside of it, that must mean there's no user. Or else, when we try to get the cookie and it's not null, there is something there, it goes to else and there is a user by that email in our system. Console log user does not exist. If this is true, we're trying to get the cookie, there's nothing in the cookie, then the user doesn't exist. Or else there must be something there, not necessarily correct data, technically, but there must be something in the cookie if it fails. If this is true, no user. If it's false, some user. Console log user does exist. So that's three equals. Remember, we talked about what the single equal is, it's just an assignment. A single equal is take the thing on the right put it into the thing on the left, basically. Double equals is check if the two things are equal. But then three equals is check that the three, that the two things are equal, but exactly also the same type, the same type of data, basically. At this point, we can save it and run it to test it a little bit. Try to log in. Well, first of all, create an account if you haven't done so yet. Then try to log in with the account you created. You should get the console output that says you exist. If you further test it and try to log in with an account that doesn't exist, you should get the message you don't exist. 
Well, not you, you're here, obviously. I mean, your account doesn't exist. <coughs> Let me test mine. Let me confirm mine is working. So a little while ago, I created v at v.com. I'm going to try to log in with it. Technically, I'm going to try to log in with a password that is the wrong password, but that's OK. All that I'm doing is I'm checking that that account exists. I'm not checking for password yet. Oops, you, you saw my password. Sorry. Uh, but it does show this account that I created a moment ago does exist. If I try to log in with victor at victor.com, I haven't created that yet. Victor at v.com. I click go on that, it says um, user does not exist. I have not created that user yet. That's that's our if statement, if else statement so far. Check if there's anything in the cookie. If there isn't, you don't exist. If there is something, you do exist. Well, this um, this uh, console log message is good for us, the developer. We also want a pop up. We want that pop-up that says um, something's wrong. We created a pop-up back in the HTML file. Let's see, what did we call it? There's a pop-up for account doesn't exist. And I called it with an ID pop error login not exists. See, did we create an object for it? Okay, so we need to do a pop up here. Uh, let's back up to line 30 or so, where we've got our variables. And these are our variables for our error messages. We need to make variables for the uh, error messages of this screen. Line 32, var dollar l popup is equal to dollar quotes pound pop error login not exists. So we did these before. We created JavaScript variables, JavaScript objects representing the pop-ups from the sign-up screen. Now we'll create the pop-ups from the login screen. Here's one of them. Dollar L pop error login not exists is equal to that thing with the ID. The other one was called error long, wrong password. So when we did this the last time, um, we had to create the JavaScript objects. Then we had to initialize the pop-up um, method so that we get pop-ups on screen. So after this part, we can now reference the pop-up via the variable name we've created.
And this will look very familiar because we had we have done this already for uh, these errors in the sign up screen. So we'll go back to the function of um, login that we were writing a moment ago back at the bottom. Back on line 122 or so. This is where we have the name of the object we just created, dollar l pop error login not exists dot pop up method to have it behave like a pop up. Next line we copy it here and remember there were a few options. You can look it up of course does anyone kind of remember what we added in here the second time? Open, yes, exactly. So we had quotes, open, comma, and then we had the options for transition. So curly braces here, quotes, transition, outside of the quote, space colon, space quote, we had an animation here. Flip, for example, we, we did that one. We did that one a few times. So that should be familiar from the last time. The object name is different, but it's the same method. Set it up to behave like a pop-up, and, and then actually open it as a pop-up and flip it. So you can save it and test it. What you're testing for is to try to trigger the does not exist uh, result from if else. So obviously, if I created an account victor at victor.com and I try to sign in with victor at victor.com, that won't trigger because that's not what I'm trying to trigger. I'm trying to trigger does not exist. So if I created victor at victor.com and I try to log in at, as john at john.com, then that should trigger. So save it and run it and see if you get that pop up to trigger. <laughs> Check if mine works. Okay, so I'm going to try to log in with an account that I know doesn't exist. Peter at Parker.com. Password doesn't matter yet. Go. Pop up. Account doesn't exist. So when we were setting up accounts with function sign up, we had two levels 
of if-else statements. We had first checking, do your passwords match? If the passwords matched, then there was a second if-else. Does the user, has the user ever been saved before? We're going to need something like that here because we're doing it now a little backwards. We're first checking, does, is that email, you know, is that email being used as a user? True or false, if else. Okay, if we then get to the else part, we are using that. Okay, next comes, let's check your password. Does the password match? So inside of the if else block, we have a comment here, if else, to check if passwords match. And here we need the if else skeleton. So we have those two main pieces of data. The person has an email address and a password. We're not asking for first name, last name, birthday, all of that. We could, and it's more data to keep track of. We're keeping it pretty simple here. This can be expanded upon, of course. But all that we care about for these users is their email and their password. And we've confirmed with the first if else the email does exist. Now it's time to check, do the passwords match? So we're going to say, is the password that they're currently trying to log in with, is that the same password that we've got stored in local storage? Lines 116 and 17 show that temp val in email login is the, uh, pass is the email they're trying to log in with, and temp val in password login is the password they're trying to log in with. So we've got both of those values in memory at the moment. If the password they're trying to log in with is exactly the same as the password that is currently stored, correct password welcome, incorrect password try again. So we'll do the we'll do the statement in a moment, but I just want to say that this <coughs> first block is going to be passwords match. welcome, or else they won't match, you can say passwords don't match, fail. Now that's just for us in the console, the user won't see this, so you could be as uh, funny or droll as you want in the console. No one's going to see that except yourself and your development team, or me, I guess. But then for the user, we want to be nice. We want to gently tell them your password is wrong. Okay, so if this, if we get true out of this, if we're checking something and this is true, passwords match, welcome to the app. Or else something doesn't match, or else something doesn't match, password doesn't match, we will let them know. So perhaps using the logic of what we've got here so far, it should make sense. Temp val in password login equals equals equals. If the password they're trying to log in with is exactly the same as the password stored, Local storage dot get item. Uh, what are we trying to get item here? <clears throat> get item gets the name of a cookie. So what cookie are we trying to get? That makes sense, but technically it's temp val in email. 
explain why in a moment, but we're checking for temp val in email login. It makes sense what you said, but technically, we are starting <coughs> when we did set item. We did set item, name of the cookie, comma, value of the cookie. So the place where the password is being stored is named the person's email. So by doing get item, we're saying, let's get an item called victor at victor.com. <clears throat> What's the data inside of it? Check the value of what they're typing in right now versus the value of what's in the cookie. So the name of the cookie is the email. It's like if a file, password.txt, in password.txt is the actual password. But the file is called password.txt, or victor.txt. In that file is my <coughs> password, kittycat99. But here is the same sort of idea. The name of the file, the name of the cookie, is the person's email. And the data inside of it, we get it when we get item. Let's compare it. If it's exactly the same, same password, great. Wrong password, fail. Go ahead and save it and run it. And now try. Now try to use your password. Try to use your password correctly and see if you get welcome. <coughs> try to use your password incorrectly and see if you get fail. Let me pause right here. If it's not quite working, let me take a quick look. But at this point, we've got it going pretty far along that it can check does the user exist or not. Does your password match or not? Let me pause here. Anyone need a little help? So check your work, make sure it shows one of those messages as expected. It's not fully logging us in, of course. We're not there yet. It's a little by little process to make sure that it all works. Let me check if mine works, and then we'll pause for questions. So, I'm going to try to try to log in with v at v.com. I know I've created that account. I'm going to log in with the wrong with the wrong password. Passwords don't match. Fail. That's fine. I haven't made a pop-up happen yet. I've just made some console output. So I'm logging in with that password. Clearly wrong. I'm going to try to log in with the same password if I remember it. Go. I did. So, password user does exist. Passwords match. So, the second if else statement is here. There's the first one to check are we using that email, yes or no? We are using it. There's the second if else. Do your passwords match? They do. Welcome. They don't. Fail. So do you get that working? Anyone need a little help? Get back to my code here. What's that? Just need to look at the code spell. Right here. This is what we've got so far. Thank you. 
All right, then let's do a little bit more here. Uh, this whole concept of uh, these couple of layers of if-else statements are... Uh, first of all, let me shut out this the noise of nature in the lab here. We don't need to hear outside. There we go. So um, here, uh, these two layers of the if-else statement get us to the point that we're reasonably sure the user exists and the password matches. Great. Well, the point here is, um, if the password matches, uh, great. Welcome to the app. Let's move you into PG Home. Finally, back to our home screen after successfully logging in or else the error message of try again. Let's do the error message section, the else part. Uh, that's a little bit easier to, to do than we'll do the, the, the if part. And here, all that we really need to do is make those pop-ups appear. Well, just like I had L, pop-up, error, login, not exists, we've got that other pop-up where the um, passwords don't match, which is the one that we created a little while earlier called L, pop, error, login wrong password. So that's the one we want to use here again to set this up as a pop-up. We've got another pop-up to display so the object that we created let's set it up to be a pop-up. Copy and paste it right after itself and then set the open and the transition parameters. Open after preparing it as a pop-up, then open it. Then here, a couple curly braces to have our options. One option is transition. So this is in quotes, transition, colon, quotes, flip. And this is uh, functionally identical to the line a couple of spaces up there at the top of my screen. That's exactly the same as what's happening when the user doesn't exist. But the difference is the name of the object. And that object represents a different div with a different message. What I also want to do is, well, we did this when we were trying to create for the user to create the account uh, function uh, sign up. Remember, if they uh, type their username, they type their email, and their passwords didn't match, wh what did we do at that point? Clear, Clear those boxes. <clears throat> Same thing here. They're trying to log in. They cannot see their password. They don't know how they misspelled it. Let's clear that box where their password is in. Well, we've got it up here in this function. Um, the actual box where they type their password is an input field with an ID in password login, which we're representing with this JavaScript object name. So that's what we can use to clear the input field. So after the error message, On that one particular box, its val will be set to nothing, quote, end quote, with nothing in the middle. I don't need to reset their email. That's going to be inconvenient. Why would I force them to retype their email? Um, it was their passwords that don't match. Um, if then they realize, oh, I'm typing the completely wrong email, then they can delete that themselves. But I don't think it's very user-friendly to also clear their email. Most likely, just clear their wrong password. You don't know how you misspelled it? Misspelled it? Just type it again. You can do a quick test on that, confirming that you get the pop-up visible on screen, and confirming that the field clears itself out. So 
I'm going to run that just to do a quick test with a wrong password. I'm going to try to log in as v at v.com but with a wrong password. Click go. Got the pop up, pop up wrong password, and the field cleared itself. And try again. I think my password is this. Try again. Nope, wrong password. Clears itself. Okay, I think it was this. Go. So there you go. Password does match. Nothing happens on screen yet. But here, password does match. What we want to happen on screen, obviously, is the passwords match. The user exists. I click go. It takes me to PG Home. So now, inside of the success portion of the if-else block, let's make a note here of something we're going to do in a moment. We're going to say to do. This is going to be something to do. I know what we're going to do. I just want to make a note of it to come back to do it. Show the user's email at the bottom of PG Home. Uh, the idea is that the person is going to log in, and I want them to quickly at a glance see that <coughs> they are the ones they logged in. As we said here, the whole point of this is here's a here's a login logout system. Multiple users can have an account. I want to quickly at a glance know who is currently logged in. So in addition to it confirming the user exists, the passwords match, I want to also show their email at the bottom of the screen. So we're going to come back to do that one in a moment. Next what we're doing here is using jQuery mobile code, move the user to PG Home section. We've been able to move from section to section by seeing a button on the screen and I press the button and I go. Here I need to do the same thing but now with a button press because it has to first check does the user exist, does the password match. So here's what you would call uh, this is a programmatic action. This is happening via the, the programming language, not by a user click but by, via the code. The syntax for this is pretty unique. First of all, the dollar jQuery selector. Quotes inside of inside of that selector. We've seen that before, but here's where it's different. Colon mobile dash page container. And I'll write more notes in a moment to fully explain it. But then that's got a method dot page container. This doesn't look like exactly the syntax we've been doing before in that we've got <coughs> object dot method. But it's the same thing. Object dot method. It's just that this very unique case, this very unique syntax is what we have to write whenever we want to move from one section to another via code, programmatically, not via a person clicking a button. So the short answer is it just has to be this way, because when they were inventing jQuery Mobile, they said, here's how we want to do it. So that's how it is. You just have to memorize it, or take notes and refer to it. And yes, very important, there's a colon there, not a pound sign, as we've seen before. Basically, this first part is, see, is saying the cur from the current page, from the current section, from the current screen, we're going to do something. And the something is right here. We're going to quotes change. From the current screen, we're going to change to PG home, comma. This is still in the parentheses. quotes pound pg home so that's different when we had it in html 
we had a button that's that goes from PG welcome to PG login. We had href equals pound PG home. Here we have it as part of a as part of a parameter in this method. Change us, comma, where, comma, one more thing. How meaning the transition. Again, I'll write it in the notes in just a moment to fully explain it. Comma, one more parameter. Curly braces, we're going to do the same that we've seen before for the animation. Curly braces, quotes, transition. This, is, this one's really going to go off the edge of my screen, maybe. Flip. So selecting the current section, whatever it may be, we'll do a method which will change us to a new section, how, with a transition of flip. Uh, selecting the current page section use the page container method to change us to the section with the ID PG home and transition and options for animation. And that's so that all of that is spelled out. Changes to a place with options for animation. Save it and run it, then we'll take our first break. Save it and run it. Uh, type in your email that you know exists. Type in your password that you know works. And see if it then finally takes you to PG Home. Check if my code works. <clears throat> so um, I'm going to log in with v at v.com with my password v. I'm going to go. And it goes. CBDB PG Home number one comic app. That to do item that I said, I want that to include the person's email address, which we'll get to right after the break. That's the idea so far. After all of this, we're getting very close to having our login, logout system work, the logging in part of it. Um, obviously pretty complex because we have to deal with passwords and all of that. It could still get even more complex, but as long as it works at this point, I think we're on a very good track. So we'll take our first break. It's 8.12. Take a break until 8.22. I'm going to put my version of the code up to where I'm at into the network folder in case you want to browse it. If you need help, call me over.